We are still on the topic this month, Build My House. Build, up, build My House is a call from God. The Word of God tells us in the book of Hebrews that every house is built by, by some man, but he that built all things is God. But God is calling us to build this house. Let's open to the book of Agai 1 from verse 1. The book of Agai 1 from verse 1. We could see that God is calling unto us. When God looks into his house and he sees that things are not the way it's supposed to be, that it looks as if the builder of his house they are getting faith. That it looks as if the builders of his house are beginning to concentrate on their own self. Then the Lord brings a word. Because it is the Holy Spirit that is teaching us it is not man. It is the Holy Spirit that is leading us because he said he will guide us into all truth. So when topic comes, it's not as if one just want to choose topic. It's because God is guiding us into the truth of the season to help us to know what we are supposed to do. Look at what is written in the book of Agai 1 from verse 1. He said, in the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Joseph, the, the high priest, saying, so speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, These people telling us our mind, these people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. The time is not come that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, all oh you? to dwell in your sealed houses, and this, this house lie waste, that means the house of God lie waste. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. If we look at the beginning of this mother, consider your ways, is what we have been dealing with. What is in our character? What has entered into our behavior? Where is our faithfulness? Where is our steadfastness? Where is our service in the house of God? When we want to build the house of God, the God needs human being because he said every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all things. We started learning that God is calling unto us to be faithful in building his house. To be faithful to do things in his house. He said because in the heart, because of weakness of mind, because of what we hear, because of things going around, because of storm that is blowing, people are beginning to be weak. Say, mm, I beg, make me not leave me. Let me just go my own way. Let me stay in my house. There is no point that we watch television. God is everywhere. After all, I myself, I am the temple of God. So anywhere I am, God is with me. Uh, forgetting that the same God, even though you are his temple, even though he wants you to be clean, gave instructions according to the book of Hebrews 10, 25, that we all, we should do what? Come together in a place that we call his home. That place that we call his house, that it is still necessary for us to come together here. So, we have to have the heart to forgive, to understand things, not to be proud, but us to be humble, because he said his ears is open to the word of a contrite spirit. Somebody whose heart is gentle, whose heart is full of mercy, whose heart is forgiven, whose heart loves God. And we concluded last week, we said we cannot say that we love God when we don't love ourselves. I mean, you must love everybody, but you cannot be friend to everybody. But love is a commandment. Love is something you must do. That means that you are not a planner of evil against anybody. That is what is called love. And whenever you see your brothers and sisters, it doesn't mean if that one is in your inner circle, you try, you help. Just as you people, you help me. You read my mother's barrier. That was a time of need that you gathered together. The whole of Innsbruck gathering together. They said, no. Go 
go and bury your mom well. That is one good thing about the Nigerians. Those who hate you and those who love you, we gather together. When things like that happen, it's true. That's in, in a way has to also tell you that nobody hates you. It's manipulation of Satan. Because that manipulation is not strong enough to read the time that you have trouble, that they don't come to your aid. That means actually they don't. I mean, you can't say you hate me and ah, my mama, my man. You that you say you don't like me, you call, you give me 100 euros, give me 50 euros, ah, you don't hate me. Now manipulation, God will punish that every way they manipulate. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's true, you have your child, you give birth to a child. Person that you think that does not want to see your face is coming to give you present for your child. That one hates you. It could only be manipulation. Let us understand some things. So God calls us that we should know how to forgive and how to let go. He said, consider your ways. And then he said in, in, in verse 8, he said, consider your ways. He said, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, says the Lord. He said, when you start seeing troubles, when you start seeing problems, it's because you are neglecting my house. When it looks as if the enemy is having his way, it's because you are not making up your mind to say that the house of God will stand strong and prosper. It's when you're beginning to have in your mind through gossiping, through murmuring, through grumbling. You don't know that that is what is happening. That you are giving messages to spirit of darkness. You are giving messages to power of darkness to start having access into the church. But the Bible said that by the Spirit of God, we have access unto God. But when we quench the Spirit through murmuring and grumbling and complaining, complaining and complaining to against one another, murmuring and complaining against the leaders, murmuring and complaining against the pastor for things that are not real, for false on false accusations, you will complain and murmur. We are opening doors for manipulators for darkness to enter and we are constraining stopping the work of the Holy Ghost but he said go and bring wood that means rise up again start up again do the needful things go again and fetch the things that you need to build my house Equip yourself with the instruments to build my house. He said, and then as you are building it, and you build it, he said, I will take pleasure in the house. And I will be glorified. That means that I, God Almighty, will be honored in that house. How do you go and take wood? What kind of wood do you need? Remember two weeks ago we said that there are different treasures, there are different ways that we build. Some build with wood, some build and have gold to it, some had silver to it. He said whatever what you add to it, just make sure that you are doing it in a clean, with a clean mind. For everybody we get its own reward. Because at the end of the day, he says some vessels will be vessels of dishonor and some will be vessels of honor. And we ask which vessel are you? So when you build, you build in an honorable way. You build in an humble way. You build in a way that shows and proves that indeed you love God. And you love his people. Because you cannot love God without loving his people. Of whom you are. For you are the royal priesthood. You are the holy nation. And as holy people, we build the house of God in a holy way. We can't build when we grumble, when we complain. We can't build. It is when we speak love. And that is what God called us to. In the book of Thessalonians, Ephesians, Galatians, all of that. He said, let us speak in psalms to one another. Let us sing spiritual songs. Let us encourage one another. That is what the church is for. Whenever a word is coming to bring that another brother or sister, we should be powerful and strong enough to say no. This is not how we talk this matter. If you are saying it this way, then let us go and see that person and let us conclude it together. 
Don't say it one way behind. Let us go to the presence of the person and repeat these things that you have said. We have said it so many times that that helps to stop gossip and it helps to stop murmuring and grumbling and complaining. Remember when they complain and grumble in the wilderness, they all perish. Because God is not happy. We open doors. But God said, get the wood and build my house. Get the rightful instrument. What is the rightful instrument? Jeremiah 22 from verse 1. He said, and say, hear the word of the Lord, O King of Judah, that seated upon the throne of David, thou and your servants and your people that enter by these gates, that means the gates of the house of God. Three, he said, thus says the Lord, execute you judgment and righteousness, and deliver the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor, and do no wrong. Do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow. Neither share innocent blood in this place. In my house, these are the things you should not do. He said, for if you do this thing indeed, then shall ye enter in by the gates of this house, king sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, he and his servants and his people. But if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. You see why Satan is using that tactics? Why Satan is using that, 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 that principle? Satan has torn it. He said, oh, so it's just like Balaam. What did Balaam say? The Bible tells us that Balaam was hired to curse in the book of Numbers 23. But Balaam could not curse the people of Israel because of the promise that God has upon them. Three times he opened his mouth to curse, three times he blessed. But what did Balaam say? Balaam said that we teach you a way that we make them to receive the cause of God automatically. He said, go and have fun with them. Have fornication. Miss with them. Let there be a missed multitude. Manipulate them away from the things of God. Manipulate them away from the word of God. Let them commit sin. He said, when they commit sin, God will automatically, the punishment that God has written in the second part of Deuteronomy 28 will automatically come against them. So the enemy will always try to use the tactics of we, grumbling, murmuring, complaining, which is the worst sin. It killed them in the wilderness. He destroyed them in the wilderness. He brings it into the church so that God cannot have his way. Because God is the principal God. He does not go back on his words. He said if you do it, he said there will be glory in the house. He said if we do it, if we build it, if we do it, he said they shall enter in by the gates of this house. Kings, can you imagine that? He said kings we enter. If you do things the way of God, when kings enter, what does king carry? That's what we ourselves, we are kings. We are the royal priesthood. We are the holy nation. We are the peculiar people. But it says that your gift will bring you before kings. Your, if you have a, a gift of God, you will be among the nobles. You will be among kings. Money go through your pocket. That is the meaning. That means opportunity will be opened for you. That the weight of royalty will not stop entering. But when the enemy does not allow one and we allow the enemy to come, he says it's desolation, it's reduction. People leaving. Because we allow what should not to become in the place of grumbling memory. 13. He said, Whoa! Verse 13. He said, Woe unto him that builds his house by unrighteousness. And his chambers by wrong, that uses his neighbor's service without wages, and give him not for his work. Thus says, that says, I will build me a white house and large chambers, and cut him out windows, and it is seen with cedar, and painted with vermilion. Shall thou reign? It's not a question of God. 
If you say you will build your house in your unrighteousness, you will decorate it, you will make it fine, you will do this. He says, shall you reign from 13? He says, shall thou reign because thou closed yourself in cedar? Did not your father eat and drink and do judgment and justice and then it was well with him? He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Don't follow the gathering of evildoers. Don't follow or join the gathering of murmuring and grumbling against the church of God. He said when you do it, it brings trouble. He said but when you do judgment, that means when you see somebody in strong, say, my brother, in this thing that you are saying, you are wrong. It's called judgment. You judge the matter and judge it rightly. When you see that what the person is doing, he or she is not proper, give justice to it. Don't support it. He said, woe unto him that built his house by unrighteousness. Whoever is building his house with fornication, these things we are hearing all over the whole place. One day, one day they will fall. When we hear that pastors are fornicating and doing adultery and they are not repenting, they continue in it. One day, one day, it will blow, it will fall. Repentance is what God calls for. Repentance. Whatever we are doing that is wrong, we need to repent and turn to God. We need to embrace salvation and turn to God. We need to come to the place of humility and accept whatever we have done wrong and apologize and move on. Know that when we apologize, we say yes, at the same time, there is no coming together. We are deceiving ourselves. So people will say it is finished. No, I don't forgive, no problem. But within us and we re relationally, it is not. We are deceiving ourselves. Like I said, we can't be friends to everybody, but you must love everyone. Amen. He said, when they are our fathers, when they were doing the right thing, when they make justice to reign, when they make judgment to reign, when they did not deceive themselves, and at the same time, they were eating, they were drinking, but they were doing the right things. He said, was it not well with them? He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was this not, was not this to, to know me? Says the Lord. So how do you say that you have known God? By doing his will. By telling the truth. Remember when somebody said, Oh, that one is not God that asked that one to leave. Then the same person left and said, God asked me to leave. And then, I don't understand. Because I responded, if God says this, I cannot stop you. Then it now becomes, oh, that is a good reason I can always give. No, let God be true and let man be a liar. May God have mercy on us and help us. May God have mercy on us and help us. Let God be true and let all man be liar. We might keep quiet and accept. But let God be true. Let God be true. Yes, it is true that God is merciful and kind. He is gracious. He is full of love and compassion. For that same God is the God of judgment and justice. We don't play with God. He might be quiet for a long time. But one day judgment comes. He could be very quiet for a very long time. He let the enemy, he allowed the enemy to have his way. What happened to, to Egyptians? They have their way to the Red Sea. Did God stop them from moving forward? Did God stop them from pursuing them? But the Israelites stood faithful. The Israelites stood faithful, holding on to God. He teaches you a pursuing that you think the enemy will overcome. That is how it looks at times that makes some people they fail in their heart. I know they go to again. That in this church, in their mentality, they think it's already gone. But they are forgotten that to test your faith and to test my faith, God will allow Egyptians to push us into the Red Sea. 
until we look unto him as the only one that is our Lord and Savior. Then God will turn back and tell all the Egyptians that the water should cover them up. That you are going through persecution does not mean you are not a Christian. And nor does it mean that you are a Christian if you are not. Because they also punish his children. I will tell you the truth though. There is no point. I was, there is no point making it on sweet as if it's only one side of the coin. It's two sides of the coin. Yeah. Devil can use you for pepper soup. But I know that when you are with God, no matter what the persecution, we did it already in the book of Matthew 5. He said you will be persecuted for righteousness sake because of my kingdom. Just as your fathers were persecuted. So we take courage from what we have read. Let them pursue us into the Red Sea. Let them do what they want to do. As long as we stand and Father, we are part of those that you have called to build your house and we will build your house and the gates of hell will not prevail according to your word. It might you it. So shall it be. Amen. Amen. You get to the Red Sea. You can shout on me. Like they shout, shouted on Moses. Moses, you want to kill us. Rachel, what did they do you? Every six years, now waiting. One wahala, one wahala, one wahala, one wahala. You sure say, you God really called you this woman. You might shout on me, but stay. You must stay. You know they hear what this woman stay. They shouted on Moses, they stayed. Abby, they said they want to go back to Egypt. Did they go? They will sit here. They complain, they will sit here. Until God rose up for them. And God said, even in the where the war, when the fight became thickest, when the fight became unbearable, when the fight became that there was no going back. But I like what God was doing. Why is it that the devil has not really caught you to destroy you? Have you ever think of that? The Bible said that on the Red Sea, in the Red Sea, the shadows of Egyptians, their army. God was removing the wheel. Because the other ones, they were walking with their feet. Gently, when they were going, God was removing their wheel. They couldn't run again. Those who are coming down, that, okay, we must pursue this one to destroy this one. We must kill this one. Leg, they weak. Their leg were entering inside the sand. And the same ground was what the Israelites were moving. At a steady pace. They were not running. At a steady pace, because if you are so plenty, at a steady pace, they were moving and the ground was smooth. He said, I will send my angels to go before you, the book of Isaiah 45, to smoothen all the crooked places so that you can walk on smooth ground. But the crooked places is made for your enemy. They will walk on crooked places. They will not touch you. You will wash on smooth ground as long as you say, Father, I am with you in your house. What you do is what I do. What you say is what I say. Madhavasharamayaha. He said to be well with you when you judge the poor and the needy. When you help those, when you take care of my house, he said, Go and fetch wood and build my house. And I will take pleasure in it. This is the time of fetching the wood. This is the time of doing evangelism. This is the time of reaching out. Reach out to those. He said, Go into the world and preach the gospel to the poor. Preach the gospel to all nations. This is not a time to say, this is our, this is our pastor saying, nah, 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 nah. this is a time to say, come and worship God. Even if there is something, forgive and let mercy prevail. Come and worship God. That is our ultimate. Our ultimate is worshiping Him. And it demands of us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not in lies. Not in complaining. Not in crumbling. In spirit and in truth. Build my house. Yeah. We saw in the book of First King, talking about Solomon, First King 6 9. He says, So he built the house and finished it. He didn't build the house halfway, he built the house and finished it. The book of First Kings, chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. He built the house and finished it. Not only finishing, he covered the house with beams and bottles of silver or cedar, 
And then he built chambers against all the house, five cubits high, and they rested on the house with timber of cedar. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Eleven. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this house which thou art in building, this house that you are building, that is the word of God, why it was still in the process, like now, in the process of putting things together, in the process of restructuring, just as the bone, the dry bones, of the, the, the value of the dry bones, uh, there was restructuring, there was regathering together, bone joining bones, structure joining structure, limbs joining limbs, uh, and to the extent that flesh came upon it, and to the extent that the Spirit of the Lord was bred into them, was blown into them, to the extent that the dead bodies, uh, one of the bones that joined together, now became a great army of the church. When things are done, he said, take your wood, come and build my house. Go and go to the mountains. I even like that word. Leave it where it is. He said, go to the mountains. Go and fetch wood. That make effort. Do you go to mountains just easily? You climb it with effort. Make effort. It takes effort to build the house of God. Make effort to bring the things to build my house. Bring money. Bring ideas. Pray to God. Mountain is a place of prayer. Pray to God and get ideas of how to make things work out for good. Pray for your brothers. Pray for your sisters. I've let go something out of my heart now as I, as I was preaching. Let it go. Amen. Amen. Pray. Let God do some things. It is from him because it is as he has done it. That is how we can do it. We can't do it our way. Always trying to do it our way is what has been causing problem. Let's do it the way of God. Let us stop this sentiment. Sentimental attitude that we have is causing much problems. And they know we are human, but still, it's bringing more problems than when we stand. We are not legalistic. It's not legalism. Yes, we are not equal. Fingers are not equal. We will look at some people. We will handle them like a baby. Some people will handle them like middle state. Some people will handle them like mature people. But unfortunately, at times, we will handle some people like mature people because we thought they are mature. True. Hallelujah, Father, I give you the glory. You are the best, Lord. You know this eloquency of speech. This charismatic way of speech. No more than God say that is not what you should look is the fruit. I can't see the art. The art comes with the fruit. I just, you know, charismatism and eloquency of speech can cover up the character. And faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Just as faith comes by hearing every lie that you keep hearing. As long as somebody is telling you lie every day, hammering on the thing, after some time you don't want to believe, you will believe because that lie is sinking in your mind, sinking in your brain, concerning that person. Meanwhile, it's a lie. By the time that you will find out that it is lie, you have already judged the person wrongly. You are already behaving towards that person wrongly before you will know it is lie. Because lie can go for 20 years according to Yoruba adage. Before the truth will come up, according to Yoruba adage, only run the lolo go to or tito you try the nicho come. 20 years, lie can tarry for 20 good years. Did it not happen to that man that was in prison for 45 years for the sin that he did not commit? How old was he before he came out of prison in America prison? He was there, lying, legal for so long years, finished the man's life and destiny. What would he be able to do when he came out at the age of uh, uh, what was he? Everybody that judged him wrongly came out and said, eh? so he didn't do it. But all of them, some of them have died. Time has gone. What do you want to change again? That is why the principles of God is not legalism. Let us do the judgment and the justice now. 
Because if we put sentiment and emotions into it, we will continue to destroy things. But if we stand on judgment and justice, it is pain. It is painful at times when you tell somebody the truth and stop the person with it. Which is the judgment? Justice. Tell him the truth and shake the person. You are my brother, you are my sister. I must tell you. It's painful. The person might even not like you for some time. But after the Holy Ghost, who is our teacher, who is our helper, who is the one that actually convinced and convinced the heart, we go and talk on our behalf. That is why it's good to follow it according to the things of God, the ways of God, not according to our understanding. The new trend now is there. But must you make peace with everybody? Must I fight with anyone? So what is your problem inside? You see, some people want me to be fighting. They want me to fight. That is what they want. And I say I'm not fighting, they're angry. Why should I fight? What am I fighting for? So I don't even get hard to fight self. Anyway. So what did he say? He said, concerning this house, which thou art building, which thou art in building, if thou will walk in my status and execute my judgment and keep all my commandments to walk in death, then will I perform. Then will I perform. It is why you are doing this. That is why before you call me, I will answer you. When you are yet thinking, I will do it. Because your ways are clean unto me. He said, woe unto the one that built his house in unrighteousness. Is that not what we read before this time? Until you are doing that which you are supposed to be doing. Because if you love God, you keep his commandment. And his commandment is, build my house. He said, why building the house is not, we have already built it by having this place. We even decorated it, there was a place, I don't know if it is in the, in the book of Kings, or is it Chronicles, that he said that Solomon built it according to how Solomon wanted the place to be. Hallelujah. And It is so good hearing that. It's not God told them how they should build, but the decoration, the everything, how, uh, the one that interests me most is how he dealt in building the altar. He laid the altar with gold. He made sure that everything that was upon the altar, upon the place where, the, where God really is releasing blessing, he made it to be in gold. But it and was so interesting. Because some will blame us. Why are you wasting this thing on the place that is not your own? But it makes the place look neat. It makes the house of God fine. See, it be like in the pocket, God is shake now, no missing it where we do no good. That Adam and Eve committed sin does not mean that the creation of God was not very good. When he created Adam and Eve, God looked at them and he said, Behold, very good. That they now committed sin, later did not change the mind of God towards what he created. They were still very good. Amen. Amen. Mm -mm. It was written that not that he determined, but that according to everything he has in his mind. Maybe you go, this second chronicles, you can go in there. According to what he has in his mind, that was how he made it. That was how he built it. Hallelujah. So we don't now start blaming ourselves and start using that to discourage ourselves. And now we are saying there is nothing. Yeah, we shouldn't have uh, 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 done the place. We actually we would have had money now. Uh-uh. Where is the goal before? The goal was to make the place fine. And we achieved that goal. We should always celebrate it. That shouldn't be something now that will not be disturbing us that we make a mistake. We did not make a mistake. Let us pass the test. Yes, it is true. If we didn't do it, we will have four months ahead or three months ahead. That was how much we spent. But no, it's something good. I mean, you should enter with confidence and say, I'm part of this project. You will use this project to call God to do something for you. That is what happened. Solomon said, I have built your house, which you have built it. And the Bible said, he started praying in that place in the book of Second Chronicles. 
Is it chapter 6 or chapter 7? He started praying. He said, this house that I have built for you, that is your house that you have built. If any person come here to come and pray, answer. Anywhere around the whole world, when they look towards distance, answer. Because you said, when we build your house, you will dwell in it. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 7.1, it says, Now when Solomon has made an end of prayer, when he has made an end of prayer, because when you look at 6, you will see what happened. I mean, I read that already before. Second Chronicles 6, 41, I read that before. He said, now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place. Ah. Thou and the ark of the strength, let the priest, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let the saint rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away thy face, the face of thy anointed. Remember the mercies of David, my Lord. He said, come. Have you will not have your place? Have you? I'm just a vessel and not nothing more. And where you are done, please take the glory and satisfy for you to be glorified, something like that. Amen. Amen. He said, Now, when Solomon has made an end of prayer. When we actually build the house of God, there is an evidence of the presence of God there. Yeah. He said, and now when Solomon had made an end of prayer, no matter what the enemy thinks they do, he said the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering. So after building the house, they didn't stop offering. They didn't stop giving because the house of God must continue. It's, that was why I told you for that. I said, don't let me bury my mama feeling. You know, God put offering for church. One, I know we hold them to all inside, not supposed to hold. <laughs> Amen. Abby, it's not as if I don't appreciate it, but I'm afraid for the house of God. And you have took good care of me. I appreciate it, and God will bless you endlessly, really. Each time I talk about it, even at my place of work, I remember you again. I remember you again. I don't know if I will be able to ever forget it. I don't think so. I remember you again, I remember you again. I'm just, God, thank you. These broke people, God will bless you. Really. But we cannot neglect the house of God. He said the fire came down and consumed the burnt offering. God received the burnt offering and sacrifices. He said the glory of the Lord filled the house. When the house of God is built well, it breaks down the glory. That is why Agai, when they built it in the book of Agai, it says, who oh, were part of those. And even the Hemaya also said, who oh, were part of those that we are still alive when this church was built at the first time. Only a few people. And they were crying because the glory of the latter church was greater than the former. Church is ecclesia. The communal place, the colonial place, the place of gathering for God. The building is a place of gathering, and we are the ones to build it. It's the physical house of the spiritual house, of which Jesus is the head, the visible God of the invisible God. He is the visible God of the invisible God. He said, and the priest could not enter. Can you see that you do your part and play your part so well that the glory of God enters and be returned? I can't even minister. You are waiting on me. God is waiting on you to play your part. See it now. He said, now when Solomon has made an end of prayer, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the pot of free and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord has filled the Lord's house. From where did the glory come? From the congregation. From their pot offering. From their sacrifices that they gave. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, how their offering was accepted, how what they have given to God was accepted, not that of Cain, but that of Abel, that is from the heart of God. They bow themselves with their faces to the ground, on all the pavement, and worship and praise the Lord, saying, Indeed, God, you are good, and your mercy endures forevermore. 
He said, Then the king got all the people offer sacrifices before the Lord. They continued offering. They didn't stop because it is necessary. And that is why we pray the prayer on Friday using the, the, the example of, of, of Jabez. And we pray this prayer for this church. God will bless you indeed. Nobody is saying it. You know, day on Friday, they repeat the prayer in the loop. See you. Your heart is not alert. You have to allow your spirit to be alert. That is how you receive. God will bless you indeed. God will enlarge your text. The hand of God will be upon you. That the evil one will not come close to you. That you will not see evil and sorrow will not overtake you. But the source of sorrow or fountain of sorrow that the enemy has created for you will become a fountain of joy. That fountain will be joy flowing out of it and no longer sorrow. That means that whatever the enemy has prepared to be a place where you will be crying every time, he will be throwing it, throwing it. That place will become a place that will be issuing out joy, issuing out peace, issuing out rejoicing, issuing out celebration unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. That is what happens in the house of God. He said, God dwells in his house. God dwells in his house. God dwells in his house. We will continue to know that God is merciful, that he is God. Jabez, things were scattered in his life, but he lifted up his voice. He said, Father, bless me. And the Bible said, God accepted his prayer. Why? Jabez was more honorable. His life was not something to write home about, but he was serving God. Things were not working out together for his good, but he was serving God. Until he opened his mouth and cried to the God of Israel. He said, Jehovah God, you are my God. You are my creator, you are my father. Turn things around for my good. The Bible said God answered him. Why? He has been faithful all along. He has been righteous all along. Despite the fact that he could have been able to cheat his brothers, the Bible said that despite the fact he does not have, he was better than those that had. The Lord turned your poverty to wealth in Jesus' name. May God turn your poverty to wealth in Jesus' name. The Lord see and say, may God turn your poverty to wealth in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that you need that I need to build the house of God, may God start releasing them unto us. God release them unto Shua. God release them unto us. God release them unto Shua. In the mighty name of Jesus, every hand of manipulation upon your life, hand of manipulation upon your business, hand of manipulation upon your home, whatever we make your heart to be faint, to be faint, not to receive the faith and the word of God. I decree that thing be cut off from your life. I those things be cut off from your life. I decree them be cut off from your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, any evil prepared against you, that evil is stopped in the name of Jesus. Any evil talk prepared against you, that evil talk is stopped in the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God said unto you and I, He said, No way of fashion against you shall prosper. He said, Every time that rise up against you in judgment, you shall surely condemn. And I stand today, and I decree that whatever weapon has been formed against you, has been fashioned against your children, has been fashioned against your life, has been fashioned against your destiny, in the mighty name of Jesus, those weapons they shall not prosper, those weapons they fail, those weapons they scatter. He said, I will do my turn, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Whatever power of darkness is stopping and fighting against this church, coming and fighting against you, because you are the Let's scatter the million fold in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, what shall I see your hand on your heart? 